Everyone uh, at home and around the world, welcome to uh, 24, Mar March 24, 2024. Um, we're here together uh, for another meditation and also for a nice community chat. Uh, and with us is uh, Sarah Zula. Hi, Sarah. Hi, everyone. So good to be back. So good to see you. Uh, and Kerich, uh, and nice instruments on the on the in the background. Hi. Hey, hey. It's great to be here. Great to have you. Uh, Sarah Brexman is on a plane. She's a, a busy, busy, uh, busy lady, which is good. Um, so, uh, and, and Brett's mom has um, her 70th birthday, I guess. So, uh, happy birthday to Brett's mom. Um, and with us is Monica. Hi, Monica. Hi, everyone. Glad to be with you again. Let's create some happiness. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, great to see everyone. I'm uh, I'm also happy because we want to make that more interactive, uh, and I'm so happy to see everyone uh, in the community and in the chat. So uh, let's make it a back and forth because I'm I'm really digging that. I really enjoy that very much whenever we can. So um, uh, we have uh, Adelina and Michelle. Um, Thank you for the compliment. Obviously, my suit. <laughs> she likes that suit. That's good. Um, uh, Suki is here. Uh, Susena. I hope that I pronounced that uh, correctly. Um, she's with us in the Ticket to Write uh, course. Uh, Alex is here. Katie. Hi, Katie. Um, Katie is from. Uh, she's. Uh, the, she calls herself a, a, a minority in uh, French Canada and. Uh, uh, we've seen that surprisingly we have a lot of French-speaking Canadians with us, which is kind of funny and cool. Uh, Carol is here. Um, Amber is here. Hi, Tori. Good to see you. Uh, Amber. Um, Susie is here too, and many, many more. So uh, let's keep the chat going. Andreas is here. Hi. Oh, from Aust oh, from Austria. I was reading Australia. Uh, I was wondering because that name sounds very, very German. Um, hi. Oh, and Connie, of course. Hi. Love from Vienna. Uh, love back to Vienna. That's always funny. It's always cool to have Connie on because uh, <laughs> she and I, we, sh we sh the Austrians and Germans share a certain route, uh, but uh, we also seem to be picky about certain other stuff, which is kind of funny. So we choose different words. Uh, do you have that in the US too? Probably you do, right? Because it's a, it's, it's a, such a huge country, can't it? <laughs> Absolutely. There are not quite as much to say dialects, but different things. For example, when you have Coca-Cola, some people will say it's a soda. Some people will say it's a pop. Other people will say it's Coke, even if you're ordering a Sprite or something else. So yeah, we have various words all over the country. Interesting. I didn't know that. I've always asked myself, what is a soda, actually? Because I'm I'm confusing that with a um, uh, soda water, I guess. Uh, yep. Right? That's, absolutely, yeah. Soda water, we, people will still say that. You know, can I have like a, a cherry soda water or something like that? But the idea is that the carbonated water is what, I guess, is soda. And then if you add on all of the other stuff is what makes it coke or sprite or whatnot so yeah uh, it's all the same route yeah it's funny uh and uh something that i i was talking to sarah about that um that it, it there was a time when german could have been the major language in the us actually uh and it was like voted on and only one vote uh less for german and one vote more for english uh, turned the whole thing into uh, every one of you speaking English instead of German. <laughs> interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, it is interesting. And there are some places um, uh, in, Ger in, in the U.S. where they still speak the German that uh, the people from the 1800s were speaking, and they were mixing it with English. It's like uh, Texan Germans, Pennsylvanian German, and it's it's really funny. It's really for for someone uh, who who can hear these accents. It's really funny to hear that because they it, they speak from a different timeline or something. It's it's really cool. Absolutely, there are like Pennsylvania Dutch and um, different Amish cultures that speak a variation of German and Dutch with a bit of English, and the way that they differentiate the 
the people that are not Amish from the Amish people is they call us the English because we speak English. Right. Yeah. And it, it doesn't matter if you even speak English or Spanish or something else, you're still the English, right? <laughs> that's a good question. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. I, I've heard that. I've heard that, that they call everyone in the outside world English, like the whole world. It doesn't matter if you're coming from France or something. If you're Canadian, you're still English. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's kind of cool. But that's something that I like about that culture, and I think that is something that we all need to go back to, is like how they, uh, how they really teach their kids how to build stuff. And, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've seen some bits and pieces of them like, like going into countries and just saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to build a house there, I'm going to build a house there, and I'm going to build a house there. And I feel that is like something that we really, really miss. Really. Absolutely. The, the Amish culture and the Mennonite culture know how to build stuff easily where the rest of us like me i wouldn't even know the first step on on construction whatsoever i, I was always wondering because i don't know i don't know why but i'm associating because maybe of your germanic uh uh background um that you're like running around with a little thor hammer and like be able to construct stuff <laughs> <laughs> i've got a very big thor hammer thor's hammer over here not too far <laughs> away <laughs> but no 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 that's I, do like to build to be honest. <laughs> I do like to build things and there has been a few times where I've used that hammer big as it is to pound in a nail here or there you wow. know it's useful like the a team wow awesome <laughs> Sarah what's up with your life you started uh um your course yesterday how was it Oh my goodness. Thank you for asking. My life is beautiful. And I did start the subconscious freedom course yesterday. And something that's so beautiful is like, we always connect with one another on the first call and I get to hear people's stories and like what they want freedom from and what inspired them to like join. And every single time it creates such a profound connection between every being who's there, because it's a conversation about like the real stuff that people are going through. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like all walls come down and it's like, oh my goodness, we all have our own story. We all have our own experience and we're in this together. So I got to experience that yesterday, which like just brings tears to my eyes every time I just like see something like that with so many beings just coming together, so willing to share, so willing to heal. It's just so special. Oh, beautiful. Uh, speaking about coming together, we have um, more people here. Haley is with us, which is uh, great. I've seen uh, Haley and Claudia meeting up, uh, which is so cool. Like people all over the world, everywhere they're meeting, uh, just because of what we do. That's so, so freaking cool. I wish we had like a sticker uh, thing where we get like a stamp for each and every friend that we create here. That'd be nice. Uh, Diana is here. Um, hi, Tim, and the All Shift Happening Now team from uh, from sunny California. That is pretty cool. Uh, how sunny is it in California uh, at this this current time? Um, and um, uh, Michelle was saying she loves her Amish workers. Uh, I'm I'm wondering, are you Amish? Do you have do you have Amish workers? Do you commission them? Um, oh, Haley saying um, with um, Laura too. Oh, hi, Laura, by the way, just rolled, uh, rolled out of bed. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Hi, Robert from Colorado Springs. Oh, man, so many cool people. Sharon is here. Uh, hi, happy shift. Susie uh, is saying she, she's seen my lucky cat waving on my desk. Uh, funny story. I went to a bazaar store here. Um, I bought some some art stuff because I wanted to to paint and do some stuff. And when I was leaving um, the the art store, this lady at the counter just randomly I don't know on purpose. I don't want to say that, but she randomly just put like for I don't know a hundred euro or so. She put these figures into. It's not worth it. The the this cat, but ah. Uh, now it's going to stay here because <laughs> she didn't give me a receipt or anything. So that's the story why we have that. And uh, hopefully it's bringing you all a good love. Um, Amber is saying we need friendship coins to pass out and share. 
each identifying yourself ourselves that is pretty awesome actually i love that idea to have friendship coins i'm currently thinking about stickers to be very honest hey sarah i'm, I'm i, I want to make some stickers because in october we're going to have the big uh all shift happening in our conference which we are uh currently diving into and uh planning it's going to be very very awesome we have so much stuff planned we have uh, the the ashram is going to provide um, uh, you know rooms for us, organic food uh, all day, water and and tea, and then we have some amazing events uh, going on. And I actually want to print some stickers. What do you think, Sarah? <laughs> Me? I think that sounds fun. <laughs> I think we would love that. We always right? love gifts. Like who doesn't love gifts? Even if it, when it's a sticker, like cool, I love the sticker. I think that's yeah, I think so too. I think that would be nice that we, uh, you know, in the end, like like years later, we have this old school sticker thing album where we have like all these stamps and stickers in that we collected over time. I, I think that's that's a funny thing. Um, who else do we have? Uh, let me know if you need an illustrator. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> that's awesome. That's super super cool. And uh, Monica, uh, what's up in your life? How do you feel? You've been with us in uh, Ticket to Ride. How's it going? Oh, thank you that you asked me that. Uh, it's great. It's awesome. I have two angels with me. <laughs> two angels, Sarah and Tim. They are they are magnificent. Uh, I'm I am working right now on a healing, um, on the subconscious healing with Sarah. And I have to admit that uh, Tim has a lot of information <laughs> I, for us. And I'm always trying to gather them <laughs> and not forget anything. Yes, I'm very happy, really. Um, everybody should do that. <laughs> That sounds like a humble compliment that you give to the, the, the math teacher, right? Man, he has so much information <laughs> so so many so many numbers well thank you for for being with us and uh, yes it's true we we have a lot to uh, to share in this um this course together and it's also a, a great great community action uh, which i very much love and, and grace is sending hi to the ticket to write implementation shifter so uh hi grace good to see you too um yeah we we have multiple groups going on. Uh, Kedrich, what's with you? What's new in your life? And and uh, what are you doing? Oh, right now I am. I don't know. I've got two powerful shadow courses that are up and online, which are getting some amazing results with folks. I'm just really excited about that. And I'm putting together some new materials for new courses because I can't stop writing. I just can't. I've got so much stuff to teach, so much stuff to bring to the world. I've got so much shadow work that keeps coming that needs to be brought out. So stay tuned for that one. That one is a work in progress, and I've got the, the works going together for that. Uh, but right now, I'm kind of in a hunker down and writing and creating mode. Wow. Love that. Um, so you're also going to, uh, and people can can um, view your stuff on kedrich.com, right? Correct. Okay, that's awesome. And you and I, we are going to uh, to do some seance together in October, which um, I'm looking forward to very, very much. Uh, I've done that in my life, uh, like with a We Are board, um, like I think when I was 18, and and we had some incredible results. It was very very interesting with some some people coming through and telling us about how the life on the other side was and a uh, big surprise to me these people had no idea about um, they were observing what's going on in the afterlife but they weren't like fully enlightened in a way that oh yeah someone came to me and explained the whole life thing they were just like okay it was over and then i was like here and now i'm here and i don't even i don't know why why i'm here so uh what's the first time when did you when did you do that for the very first time when did you get in contact with like the first we are bought and how was the experience Kedosh? oh i was a kid i was i was probably oh 13 14 15 years old when my parents took me to the first seance because we went to a spiritualist church and the church had trans channeling trans mediumship as part of their service and every Saturday night, there was a seance in the basement. 
And as part of the collection of the board games at home, you know, as everyone has like the Parcheesi and the Monopoly and all that, there was the Ouija board. And so I would occasionally break that out and tinker with it and see how it works and how it goes. And to be honest, it is not a very effective tool for me. It works. It works. But, you know, there's some people that the planchette just flies all over the place. Like yeah. my fiance, she's amazing with physical mediumship. She can do a Ouija board really well. For me, it's slow and clunky because for me, I'm more of a, a mental mediumship. I, I, by claircognizance, I will pick up information that comes in. And so my favorite tool in a seance setting is a black mirror because wow. a black mirror can act as a portal to another realm, to another entry place. And it will shift your perception of physical reality. It will shift it beyond the 3D world. And it moves it to a completely different state, which alters your ability to receive, perceive, and accept information. And then the spirits that communicate through that use basically claircognizance, you know, like the downloads, the, the gnosis that comes in. So I tend to call it a silent seance because when I teach using a black mirror, it's a group of us sitting there just staring at a black mirror for a half hour being completely quiet. And then wow. when we come out of it, we share the downloads and the information that we get. And one of the best advantages for it is you see when we're doing a regular seance, like when I teach seance and I teach people to use like a pendulum or dowsing rods or the Ouija board automatic writing, we're definitely communicating with people, humans that have died. And it's, you know, they're they're just transitioning to the other side. They're over there. They're like, hey, I love you. Everything's great. This is wonderful. You know, they'll usually pass on some really good messages. But that's the general gist of messages that come through with people is just like, hey, I remember you. Things are good. You know, sometimes a little validating information, what people need to hear. And it's wonderful because some people get closure. It helps to heal some of the grief process. People realize, no, life does continue. I don't have to be afraid of death. But when we w work with a black mirror, we're connecting with higher level beings like guides, ascended masters, higher level instructors. And so the information that comes through is just profound and life changing. It's, it's not just those nice messages. Hey, I'm doing great. This is wonderful. It's like, here's something to better understand how the world works. Here's something better to understand how life functions and how you can make a big shift in your world so the black mirror like i said is my favorite tool because it just seems so profound and it gets so much information out of it it's wonderful oh, interesting i've never never done that and never heard about it too i i got some questions um but sharon is uh saying that um she loves your uh decoration in the background uh especially the haunt you later sign <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a little Ouija board underneath it. Oh, it is? Yep. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do see that. It's a beautiful one, though. Interesting. Yeah. I want to know from everyone in the chat. So um, uh, did you try that? Did you do a, a Ouija? Ouija we are, uh, actually. I think it comes from the French word uh, we uh, and the German word ja, right? You are correct. It's just here in the US, we tend to say either Ouija or Ouija, but you're right. Ouija is also an acceptable pronunciation because it is yes, yes. Yeah, interesting. Uh, especially because in the 1920s, uh, you know, the, in the Europe, uh, Euro European area, that uh, the spiritual stuff was like highly, highly uh, en vogue, right? Everyone was doing that. Absolutely. That's one of the things I tell people about the Ouija board, the Ouija board, is to remember that it's just a piece of wood with letters and numbers, just decorations. That's all it is. It's just a piece of wood. And how you approach it, if you're afraid of it, if you have fear going into it, if you know there's some past baggage that you're bringing into it, you might have a bad time with it, which is why I do a lot of shadow work for paranormal so that we release some of those fears, some of those limiting beliefs about it. But if you go into a session where you know how to set sacred space, where you clear energy internally, you connect to higher level beings to help facilitate communication, you're going to have a wonderful time with it. And that's what they were doing. You know, that's what they were doing in the 1900s, early 1900s, late 1800s. They were having wonderful sessions because they weren't afraid of it. They weren't taught to fear 
the Ouija. They weren't taught to be afraid of seance. It was like this open exploration of like, oh, what is this? This is curious. And so they learned a lot more, but I hate, I hate to say it, but it was when The Exorcist came out, the movie The Exorcist, mm -hmm. that the Ouija board became this evil, terrible, awful thing. And then that just kind of perpetuated and created this interesting little culture in our world about the Ouija and seances being evil when people have been doing seances since the dawn of time. You know, every single culture on this planet, no matter what it is, believes in the afterlife, knows how to communicate with spirits in the afterlife. But it was only recently in the late in the late twentieth century that it became like this scary, awful, bad thing. Yeah, interesting. Alex is um, saying that he thought that the we are board was only to attract negative stuff, which is absolutely not the case, right? Correct. Yeah, I, I personally, I'm again, I've, I've done that when I was eighteen, and and I came across some some uh, some 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 documents, some stuff which was about um, African rituals, but also like the we are stuff and so on, and we did that, and it was incredible because for me it was like a life-changing experience as well because then there was like this guy who was saying uh he died in berlin uh in the 19 uh 1950s or so he had like he was falling down from this horse the horse was like jumping up on him and then suddenly he was like in this afterlife thing and he was saying that there's music that there are some like people that were artists on the earth and they still sing in the afterlife and still gather people around and so it was like amazingly interesting and he said like in the very second when you die you regain like what he called a universal language and all that stuff happened just because we were like moving this little thingy across the board absolutely and that you hit that nail right there on the head the universal language spirits do speak a universal language and that's part of the transition going from the physical world to the spiritual world is here in the physical world everything is linear one word follows another everything makes sense in a linear fashion you get over to the other side time doesn't work the same way as it does over here so you need a non-linear language which is sort of emotion based you know the, the primary language of all spirits is emotion so i tell people to tap into your clairsentience tap into your empathy what does it feel like but embedded in that emotion is the information which we call downloads or gnosis gnosis is the old word for download and that's the universal language you learn that universal language and the higher up you get it feels like a blip like when you're talking to a higher level spirit a high level being like an ascended master something on the angelic realms it's like a blip of information comes in and you're like what was that and then it expands and you're going to spend the next few days understanding what that little blip was because they communicate at that high frequency of a universal language wow okay that's interesting um i was laughing because Haley was saying she's never she never tried we are but um she feels like she is a we are bought so uh, <laughs> that's that sounds a little bit like uh dali who said like i've never done drugs i am the drug <laughs> 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 love that hey sarah did you ever try um a ouija board or anything like that i know like slumber parties in the us at least you know from what we are show monica is laughing the stuff that we get from from american television where like people uh teens are gathering around keep putting on some candles and then calling in ghosts and everything is shaking in the house uh, is that is that normal <laughs> <laughs> experience that you know it is an experience in the u.s i've had friends that did it but for some reason i always left when i was little i would be like i don't know about this and i would leave and it might have been fear it might have been programming it might have been the exorcist seeing that when i was little but I, I never really i never did it now i i completely resonate with what kadrick is saying of like it's it's a piece of wood and it's a medium and it depends on how we approach it like i love that approach that kadrick is taking but um in the past when i was younger yes those experiences have happened like with friends hanging out like a bunch of friends hanging out like let's let's do this let's try this a slumber party when i was younger and then i would be like i'm gonna go home i just never did it i don't know oh that's funny okay let me read what the others are saying in the chat so um Alex is saying I used once I used one once with friends when we were like 16 and I think some entity
followed him around uh, and he was spooked for weeks. Uh, yeah, I mean, that can happen, right? Uh, Kedrich, sometimes uh, like they are like there are spirits that are bored. Uh, that's my that's my thought. They really <laughs> right. Yep, it, it, it definitely can happen where spirits kind of hang around, kind of follow us around. Here's a few different scenarios that could happen. Sometimes we could connect with somebody that needs help. They don't know that they need help, so they attach, and we agree to help them because maybe we're compassionate. Maybe we want to be helpful, and it creates a not beneficial relationship for the two of us. Another time, it could be somebody just curious, like, hey, what's going on? What's happening here? But here's an interesting perspective to have about this. When we do seance, no matter if it's somebody doing it for the first time, just learning it, when we are in that environment, it opens up our psychic abilities. It opens up that third eye. It opens up our ability to perceive more of the subtle realms. And it doesn't matter if it's night or day, light or dark, spirits are around us everywhere, all the time. We share reality with them. You do, there is no veil between the worlds. We are the veil. We tune in. We tune out to spirits. And so when you do seance, you're more open. You're more perceptive. So you may not have realized it, but that spirit may have been hanging around the entire time. It might have been a guide. It might have been a friend or somebody just hanging out. But when you did that little seance, your abilities were open up. And you're like, oh, what's this thing following me? Well, it's, it's always been there. Oh, interesting. Um, that uh, it fascinates me because that uh, experience for me was like very, very profound. Um, who else do we have? Uh, Ember had has tried it, but it's not her game. Um, she did some pendulum stuff. That's interesting. Um, uh, Michelle said her friends uh, and she was they were using uh, similar boards. Um, they called it the magic circle. It came with opening prayers and mantras to open protect channels. Protect. I think that is a clever idea to to chant some and, and prepare the stuff and not go into. It's all, it's the same with ET contacts, right? We wanna uh, we wanna avoid certain negative stuff and prayer and uh, mantras and some magic and some sprinkling. It's always a good idea, um, no matter where you are in life, I guess. Katie is saying her brother played with one um, and he had visitations afterward. What kinds of, kind of visitations? E.T., spirits? And Laura tried We Are, but um, is more into the Black Mirror thing. Um, Michelle is doing it, uh, but you got to clear the room of negative energies and be open to the light beings before using it. Uh, and Michelle is saying she, they took them to Girl Scouting camp trips. Uh, we would <laughs> levitate each other too. The, see, that is the stuff that we learn in Europe, you know, from, from all these American uh, movies that we watch that, you know, people go to uh, scouting uh, adventures and they do that kind of stuff. Um, we have used the... Uh, Sharon's family has uh, used the... Key, we are bored many times. Nothing bad has ever happened. That's good. That's good. We believe you get back what you bring into this and any practice. Uh, I, I guess everyone here agrees. That's that's very, very true. Uh, Cindy loves working with the We Are Board. And Black Mirror communication is definitely her tool. Um, what is that? What is a Black Mirror, uh, Kedrich? Literally, it's just a picture frame where you paint the the glass black. That's the ones I prefer to use. You can also get like black onyx, like just a circle of black onyx. And when you're in a, it's kind of interesting, but when you're in a dark room, the set and setting, remember set and setting is critical. You set set and that correctly. And then you use that as a meditation tool, like an open eye meditation. You will see things in the mirror. You will see, like, I there's a whole color spectrum that is vivid and bright, but I cannot name the colors. Imagine impossible colors, They're not yellow or blue or green. There are other colors that I can't describe. Paint them. Describe them. <laughs> <laughs> and you will see different things happen. Like I remember one time looking to the black mirror doing my meditation and my back was against the wall. And as I'm walk, look, seeing in the mirror, somebody is walking behind me. Wow. Well, of course it's impossible, but they're in the mirror walking behind me. So it will shift your perception of reality, which is what opens your mind. Remember I said, you are the veil. It opens your mind, your perception so that you can perceive 
beyond the 3D, beyond the 4D, either the 5 and 6D easily. Oh my goodness, that's that's very interesting. I'm I'm up to do that uh, to to utilizing that. Uh, we know from from documents and and uh, archaeology that uh, all these uh, South American and certain other tribes are using black onyx. Uh, maybe that's the same practice, right? Oh, everyone's nodding here. Okay, I'm the only one who didn't know that. Okay, <laughs> a little interesting history about that is the Greeks would have a black cauldron with some water in it and they called it a necromantium that you go into a, a cave and commune with the spirits and interestingly enough dr raymond moody has updated that he calls it a psychomantium and when he sits with a client they talk about their loved ones who have recently died you know the good all of the kind of life that they had with that person and then they go sit in a dark room with a black mirror and connect with their loved one it's even Dr. Raymond Moody uses a black mirror as a way to connect with spirits on the other side. Oh man, I'm I'm excited because in October uh, you and I are gonna do a seance together uh, in the most spiritual area in Europe. Uh, we can tell you that because it's um, gonna be uh, at the external stones, not directly at the external stones, even though we're organizing huge loads of buses and then we all go to the external stones. Uh, man, the spirits they're gonna love that. Uh, when we write into that, um, uh, still working with the German authorities to get the permissions for that, and uh, but we're doing like the seance in the ashram together. Um, hopefully, gonna light up some candles, and whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen, and I'm excited. And the goal is to uh, to actually not only reach out to like some spirits or whatever comes through as nice beings. Uh, but also to connect uh, being six, because um, this can be a tool in order to connect to being six. And I'm I'm quite interested what uh, in, comes through of that. Kind of cool. We also, uh, Sarah is going to do on, in the conference a live healing uh, with people um, right before the seance, right? We, we thought like, hey, that's, that might be a clever idea that we do like a, a live healing session with everyone and clear and uh, make the room beautiful so that we really focus on being six uh, and uh, yeah, not on something else. So uh, Sarah, want to enlighten us on that? Yeah, you said it. It's like, why not do that healing, that healing part? So all of us have an opportunity just to clear, to feel our best, to feel our lightest, to put all the stuff aside and be able to be pure connection and just have fun with it and have a lot of beautiful energies with everyone around right before the seance. Why not? And also I was trained. So I used to do site uh, retreats at sacred sites in, in Mexico. And um, when I was working with some of the Mayan wisdom keepers, they would always talk about how um, let's do the purification part. This is the word we're using now, but let's do the healing part first before the, going into the sacred sites. So I would always be running a meditation and take people through exercises to do subconscious, what I call subconscious freedom work, healing work, whatever we'd like to call it. And then the mind wisdom keepers would take us on the trail to the sacred site and teach us the proper way to go into the sacred sites with reverence as if we're creating a relationship with that sacred site. So it's very interesting because we've never talked about this, but this is a role I've played also in um, the Mayan, Mayan sacred sites and, and sacred sites in Mexico. So it's really cool that we're, we're doing it. We're just naturally repeating it once again here. We are doing it. I'm, this conference is going to be so packed with fun events. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, to, you know, Sarah Brexman is not with us currently. She's on the plane. Um, we wish her uh, a good flight. Um, but she and I will be doing a comedy night too, which I, I'm so... I'm so freaking excited for that. So the the very last day um, at night, uh, Sarah and I, Sarah Brexman and I, uh, will be um, doing like an open mic night. So uh, we're gonna share some some fun stuff, and uh, it all came up. You know, Sarah was I was say I think it was like a joke. I was saying to Sarah Brexman like, hey, you and I should go to a club and just like be an, an open mic comedy thing. And she was like, oh my god, yeah, I did that already. <laughs> like what? Yeah, give me a microphone and I do it. And I was like, okay, yeah, let's let's do it. Let's do it then. So and um then funny funny enough, we had um uh someone in the ticket to write group and she has had she had a um com comedy club in LA, I think, or Texas, somewhere in the US anyway. 
Um, and um, I asked her, hopefully she's going to host the whole night, which is going to be so freaking cool. So we have like an excursion to the Eckstone Stones uh, with Kedrich, who's going to um, who's going to take us there. And uh, uh, we also do the seance with Ke with Kedrich where we contact being six. Uh, we're going to do the healing um, session uh, with Sarah, uh, where she's getting people from the audience on the stage uh, doing the healing uh, session. Um, we're also going to have the comedy night. We're going to, the, the ashram will be hosting yoga lessons with us. Um, and we have beautiful food uh, for hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, and it's going to be freaking amazing. I, I love that very much. I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah. Uh, I've been seeing you on Gaia. Thank you. Yes, I am on Gaia <laughs> multiple times. Um, Haley and I got to the Magic Castle this past week, and we had so many experiences there. So this conversation is fitting. I don't know what the Magic Castle is, Laura. You got to explain that. Um, uh, thank you, great Tim. Um, thank you for injecting humor into this community. It needs levity. <laughs> Not our community, I guess, but uh, yeah, the world. Uh, I always find that humor is like the one most healing thing in the world, right? Kedish is nodding. Sarah is nodding too. <laughs> you can say something. I said two names. Now everyone's waiting for me to specify who I'm talking to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe that. I believe that very much. And I've personally encountered that, that um, when you come to a point where you can laugh about a certain situation, uh, the situation is not, not bad anymore. Uh, that's that's the beauty of it, right? It's, it's like the ancient Greek people were saying, uh, life uh, can be uh, uh, a drama until it becomes a comedy uh, over time. Which is nice, right? It's it's nice. When whenever you when you can laugh about a certain situation, the whole thing is not not bad anymore. Do you think so too, Sarah? Yeah, and that's exactly how I start. Like my bigger my bigger trainings, my subconscious freedom mastermind, where people are coming into the space for six months. Like on the first call, this is the conversation. Like where, and I like to use the word play. Like where can we play with our awareness? Where can we get the curiosity of a child and bring levity to this information? Because it's really like I always share. It's not personal. It feels personal because we've been through what we've been through, and we're holding on to it. But we could also just think of it like programming. It's just a perception. It's just information. And if we can be light with the information, we can learn so much more. It's like that curiosity of a child that lets us deal with things like the darker parts or the shadows or the more difficult experiences with so much more light. And then once we're lighter with it, we get more information from these parts of ourselves. So I always like to start things with like, where, like what if it gets to be easier than we've ever thought? Like, what if, what if it got to be easy? What if it, we got to laugh about these things that have happened in our reality? What if we just got to laugh at ourselves for like our humanness that comes through sometimes that is pretty funny, some of the stuff we do. So I always like to take that approach. I always start things with that because I, I truly believe that when we can laugh these things away, we, when we can bring some levity and lightheartedness, it does heal the heart in such beautiful ways. And it gives us the ability to tap into information for from these parts of ourselves too. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I feel inspired. I'm gonna try the the Black Mirror thing uh, that Kedish was speaking about because that is that sounds really interesting. I've never done that before. Uh, what we've done in um, so on Wednesdays we meet some of the people that have the ticket to ride and we just um, implement that. And uh, some of you of you are here. Grace is here. Katie is here. Um, Tori is here. And uh, I think Sharon, I, I, I saw Sharon too. So on Wednesdays we meet and uh, last time we were, it's so funny how these things happen, right? Uh, I was talking about the 1920s when we are boards and, and the seances and so on came up in, in Europe. Uh, and I was saying that there, there was a phenomenon uh, in Europe because it, it was so en vogue and everyone was trying these things. And then suddenly the phenomenon that came up was all over Europe, people were hearing knockings. You know, like knockings on the in the rooms, like the rooms were communicating uh, with the people, and it was absolutely fascinating. We were on this video call, and we were talking about that, and you can't believe that. You can't make that up. But one minute later, in my <laughs> my wall, it was like knocking, and I was like, "Did you hear that?" It was just like knocking, 
one minute later, it was like in Grace's room, it was like knocking. Sharon's room was knocking. Sarah's room was knocking. We all had like knockings everywhere. And we were sitting like, like that and was like, uh, we thought this was a private call. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> right? Open Beautiful. source universe. <laughs> yeah. I think so too. I mean, it was it, it's nice because um, you can feel the communication between worlds. Then, and of course, we're not alone. You know, we've never been this this universe is just one life form with so many other life forms. That'd be like like one organ in your body saying, "Hey, I think we're the only organ in this body." No, you're not. You're not. There are like different other pieces of. Uh, of entities around us. Sharon is saying that was awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. That was like <laughs> universal humor. I love that. Uh, Adelina is saying, please hit the like button. It helps support the channel and YouTube's algorithm. Thank you so much for saying that, Adelina. Um, I agree. Uh, if everyone could like uh, hit the like button, um, that's gonna help. But uh, it's it's uh, also about the community, you know. So. Um, that's uh, that's the thing. Diana is saying, uh, Tim, do you think the solar storms and eclipses are all positive things that will help shift us and the world into a positive direction? Um, I I do believe that. I I I mostly believe that. Yes, um, because again, the the sun is um, bringing consciousness into a world. So the more uh, sun activities we have, the higher the degree of data that is that is flowing into our world, and they will ultimately enrich us but i mean data is like uh input is is pretty neutral it can go various ways right if you the same flow of input into a different person can activate something that is like highly different like probably the same with this um, black mirror things people that observe it will get different information out of it so uh Kedich was nodding so i think i'm my assumption is right here um yeah that's uh, oh, Sharon's saying, then the phone rang and stopped after one ring. Yes, that is something. <laughs> because I was, the story was uh, that in the 1920s, people had this uh, this knocking everywhere. Uh, and it, that was the time. Not everyone in the 1920s had a, f a phone. It was actually very, very rare that people had a phone. I, I remember my grandfather was the third person in town in the city who had a phone. So, um it was kind of rare to have a phone, so everyone was hearing knockings uh, everywhere. Even like there was no body, but it was there was some sound. And I said like something that I've discovered is that is that I often hear the the dialing tone or like a phone uh, tone or something, and it just starts and it stops, and no one's answering. You know, you have this do 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 phone call, and then it's it. that's it. Nothing else happens. And one time I was telling that story to someone and was saying, like, do you hear these these sounds? And in that very moment outside, there was like this honk from like a car. And, and that person was like, yeah, I, I heard that now. And I was like, yeah, that, yeah, that wasn't what I was referring to. But yes, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so yeah, and Sharon's um, phone was was ringing. Uh, definitely a special energy and a special connection. Katie is saying yes. Uh, it, it's it's absolutely wild uh, what can happen if we come together as a group and do these things together. That's that's pretty amazing. Okay, everyone, uh, beautiful, beautiful. Um, we are uh, entering the one hour mark, uh, and I, I love to to make these um, these monthly sessions that we have, and and have them you know more interactive because I think it's such a fun thing. We have these amazing people here um we have the golden ticket winners uh stick with us after the meditation we're going to do a little quiz because we are giving away another golden ticket uh because we'd love to have uh some more people and then um we are also uh Kedrich and i would debate uh the the background um of the question itself it's going to be a nordic germanic question but it has some some relevance and it's um, connected to one of the advanced projects programs, which has the same name as the thing that we're going to ask. So uh, let's dive into a quick meditation of the day um, to end this beautiful get together that we have. Um, beautiful thing about the conference each day we're going to start. We're going to start quite late because I have a feeling every one of us loves our loves our sleep. So we start at we start after the uh, after the 
the the uh, noon uh, is that lunch? Is that dinner? I always uh, mistake. I think it's lunch, right? When it's like at noon, is there? Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so uh, we're gonna have lunch, and then we're gonna start together the conference, and we do a live meditation to set the tone, uh, and then we dive in all these fun activities. Um, and uh, we have multiple of them coming up. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, Ocean, is that, Ocean, is that Leah? I don't know. Uh, anyway, thank you, Tim. Love your work. Uh, thank you so much. It's a group effort. We are squads. <laughs> We're a community. Um, so let's dive into that. Let's have a quick meditation together, um, like a few minutes each, and then we have a quiz. So everyone at home, uh, get comfy, take some refreshing breath and uh, close your eyes if you want to. And uh, let's, let's make our will apparent for the universe so that we all shift happily now. Have your eyes closed. Bring yourself into this meditative state of mind. Feel how beautiful it is to get together as a community, to be with friends, to be with people on the spiritual path. Know that we've never been alone and that there are so many multiple millions of, of other entities that surround us, that go with us on this path. Not only spirits, not only ETs, but also other aspects of our own selves. And of course, friends. Friends in this All Shift Happily Now community. Uh, for every friend, we get a friendship coin very soon. So focus on this beautiful feeling. And with each breath, get into a sweet and nice tense state of mind. Relax. Focus your awareness on the point in the middle of your forehead. And with each breath in, Try to draw in energy through this point, through this third eye point. Even though you have your eyes closed, focus your eyes a little bit further up in, onto this point so that your eyes and the point in the middle of your forehead kind of meet. And with each exhale, Try to bring beautiful energy through your third eye into the world. Know that there are so, so many people in this All Shift Happily Now community all around the world. And we're doing that for everyone. Also for those who are currently somewhere else and need that too. So see them lightening up in front of your eyes while you keep breathing and focusing on your third eye. And connect to them. Call them in. Call them in. Call these spirits in that are helpful and supportive. And if you want to, let's make this an open, open statement of connecting with these spirits, with these guides, with these help us with these friends some of which have incredible skills acquired over time and over experience and they are there they are here to help us if we want to it can be a mutual exchange too sometimes just like a smile sometimes it's just a present a gift or something that we return to them and sometimes it's just about connecting. As much as we all connect with each other, we all share this beautiful friendship, this beautiful love with each other. And let's focus on growing that community further and further. Let's focus our minds and draw in all these good souls, draw in all these good spirits, so that the word and the good friendship energy is spreading more and more across the whole realm of this planet. See these beings million times lightening up on the, on the Earth's uh, surface. See their bodies lightening up because they, they might be aware of it, they might not be aware of it, but they are connecting to us. We are connecting to them. And then we pull them in 
and we pull in this beautiful energy and the beautiful and friendly souls and spirits friendly ETs, friendly families, friendly ascended gurus and masters, everyone who wants to connect with us in this friendly manner, everyone in the universe who believes in that type of energy. And then the beauty and the communication and the interaction and the fun that that is created when we do that. Just as much fun and even more like we had today when we were connecting in the YouTube chat, when we were like talking to each other, when we were exchanging uh, stories about the we are boards and everything that we've done so far. So connect to them and throughout this practice, let's draw them in and pull them in further and further so that this beautiful wave of energy is growing more and more. And also within yourself, feel these good energies growing more and more. When I now gently pass that over to Kadri so that he can continue this beautiful meditation of ours. Thank you. That's wonderful to call in these beings, to call in these entities to be around us, to invite them to connect with us, to be a part of our lives, to help guide us and influence our thoughts, our emotions, and even our behaviors in the world. And I know that sometimes when we're connecting with these beings and we're aware of these beings, things get in the way. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's doubt, uncertainty. Sometimes something gets in the way. So at first, right now, I want you to remember what it's like to be in the presence of the sacred. Maybe it was a time and a place. It could have been a church, a temple, someplace in nature, or even in an out-of-body meditative experience. Just be aware of that sacred energy. Feel that sacred energy. And knowing that all you have to do is breathe. As you take an in-breath, you feel that sacred energy flowing into your body and being, coming into you, filling and surrounding you. As you breathe out, that energy compounds, it builds up, it gets brighter and stronger. So the very act of breathing with the intention of connecting with the sacred is all you need to do to bring that sacred energy into you, through you, and all around you. And knowing that you have that sacred connection now, that the divine spark in you is awakening, I want you to think about communicating with spiritual beings of any kind, connecting with extraterrestrial, extra-dimensional beings. And notice what gets in the way, if it's that fear, if it's that doubt, if it's that uncertainty. And just for this moment, connect with that block, connect with that fear or that doubt. Let yourself feel it. Breathe into that feeling, make it a little bit stronger so that it has its say. And something that I want you to know is that fear or that doubt is getting in the way to protect you. It's something that you learned at some point in your life as a means to shut off or disconnect to keep you safe from the things that you were told that you need to be safe from. But you have that connection to the sacred. And I want you to know that similarities attract and perpetuate. As long as you're making that connection to the sacred, as long as you're holding that intention to the highest level, those are the only beings that you can connect with. And knowing that, I want you to feel gratitude to that fear, that doubt, that uncertainty, knowing that it was there to help keep you safe. Because there's something wonderful and important about you that needs to be kept safe. And so that was there because that's what you learned to do to keep yourself safe. And that's wonderful in every way. And with that gratitude, allow that fear, that doubt, that block to dissolve. Connecting with that sacred energy and feeling that sacred energy flowing into where there was that doubt and fear. Knowing now 
that since similarities attract and perpetuate, that you have this connected to the sacred and you know how to connect to the sacred, that that will keep you safe and connected to higher levels all the time so that it's okay to instantly and easily release that fear, instantly and easily release that doubt, allowing that sacred energy, that sacred connection to flow into that space, to transmute that shadow energy into your highest energy, allowing yourself to be open and connected to communication from these higher level beings. Because you are a higher level being, you are connected to the sacred. And you will always be safe and connected with that connection. And with that, I bring it over to Sarah. And thank you, everybody. Let's stay in that connection with the sacred and start feeling into the energy of the sacred in every cell of your body. Breathe it in. Breathe in how beautiful it feels to feel connected to this divinity. As you breathe and soften and relax even more, feeling your whole body melt into this beautiful energy of the sacred. And now that the clearing has been set, begin to tune into the healing, helpful beings that are so happy to support you. This could be angelic, this could be multidimensional, this could be extraterrestrial. Whatever it is that is your heart home of the beings that are here supporting you, guiding you, tune in to the healing beings specifically and allow your whole being to rest feeling held by these healing beings who are here to support you. Allow your body to relax, your physical body, allow it to relax into the healing energies of these beings who love you, who are sharing the sacred space with you, who are protecting this space for you, with you. And allow your entire being to dissolve into this beautiful healing energy. And feel that this energy is rejuvenating you. It's bringing life force into every cell of your body in a gentle, loving way. It's bringing healing to the cells of your body that can use it. And it's bringing rest to parts of your body that you didn't even know needed the energy of rest. Feel these beautiful energies flooding into your system with gentleness, with beauty, with love. These beings, these healing beings who are supporting you, rejuvenating you and nourishing you so that when you open your eyes from this meditation, you feel rejuvenated to go be on the earth as who you came here to be. Breathe in these beautiful rejuvenating energies to every cell of your body and feel your body relax even more into these healing energies, into this support. Allow it. You are loved in it. You are so appreciated for all that you do. Allow yourself to relax and receive this rejuvenation. And take a moment and feel so much gratitude for these loving beings. who are supporting you and remembering the life force in every cell of your body. 
rejuvenating the life force, healing the life force in every cell of your body, supporting the energy flow to flow naturally as you just sit back and relax even more, trust it. And breathe and soften and relax, feeling your body rest. Giving your gratitude to these beings, these healing beings that have supported you, that have sent this rejuvenating, beautiful energy to you. And just release these beings to whatever degree feels good for you to release them now. Feeling rejuvenated and feeling ready to do what you came here to do on earth. Feeling ready to be who you came here to be, whatever that is, loving that, trusting that. And bring your awareness and energy fully into the you that you are now. Grounding your energy and grounding your awareness now into this moment, into this time, into this space. Feeling the swirling, beautiful, rejuvenating energies anchoring into the you that you are now even more. And getting ready to come back to this beautiful call. Take a few breaths into your body, wiggling your fingers, wiggling your toes, feeling so grateful for the beautiful connections, the beautiful healing energy the connection to these beings, the clearing of the blocks, feeling gratitude and feeling gratitude for you. You are such a beautiful being and you are appreciated and you are loved for all that you are and your efforts are noticed, they're acknowledged. You are loved. And go ahead and bring a smile to your face, feeling connected to the energies of joy and levity that can come with a smile. Breathing into that smile, making it bigger, making it goofier. I can see all of you on here. Breathing into the smile, making it bigger, making it goofier, and feeling what that does to your system as you smile. Beautiful. When you're ready, feeling grounded, feeling great, Go ahead and gently open your eyes coming back to this call. Thank you so much, everyone. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and also, let's bring say it together. Let's say all shift happening now together. And make it this way that uh, let's make it so clear and so profound that we make it a, a statement for what we what our will does. And let's call in all these entities so that they can find us and see our pure hearts and support us and be with us uh, throughout the dimensions, throughout the countries, throughout the worlds, wherever they are. So let's do it together. Let's say all shift happily now together in three, two, one. All, all shift, shift happily, happily now. now. <laughs> Beautiful. I love that. Ah, it's so sweet. We've done that in Italy too with Daman who are in that um, globe uh, orb room uh, where they do their rituals for the world too and it was magical. It was absolutely magical. Um, thank you so much, everyone. We're not at the end currently because we want to do a uh, quiz, a real quick quiz together. Um, uh, beautiful. Thanks for everyone in the chat uh, <laughs> writing all of the happening now. Have a happy... Uh, happy healing tears uh, said amber um she's always in tears when we do these meditations that's so beautiful uh samu thank you um uh hi by the way N good to see you um so we have a quiz because um we want to give away another golden ticket so next time we're gonna have a a uh, another special person a surprise person which we not know yet but i best bet the universe does know who it is uh in in our round um i i start the question because we do want to give away two uh Kedich is giving a very specific question to nordic um mythology uh and i'm curious um who, el who of you knows that? And I'm giving a more basic question uh, so that we uh, 
definitely you can Google that if, if you're quick enough. So the first person who writes the name correctly into the chat um, has won the golden ticket and will be with us next time and has the ability to ask some questions or say something or do something, whatever. Um, so here's the question. Again, be quick in the chat. The first one who writes it correctly, like correctly spelled, um, uh, wins the ticket. So there is a program uh, in uh, Europe, in Germany, and they were uh, uh, doing stuff with timelines. They were looking into timelines and they were looking into how time actually works. And they found out that the time string looks like a tree. It grows into certain directions like roots and like the, the, um, the crone of the tree. Uh, and it has these fractal patterns, right? Like, like little branches that go everywhere. Uh, they can be failed timelines. And if so, they return back to the stable time, uh, time uh, flow in the, in the middle of it, the time stream in the middle of it. So the question has to do with Nordic mythology, because we're going to uh, the external stones. What's the name of that project? And the hint it is, it's the same name as uh, the famous tree in the Germanic mythology. Was that, was that explanation good enough? Do you want to add something to that, Kedrich? <laughs> we can make it clearer. It holds the nine worlds in place. It holds the nine worlds in place, like time does, which is interesting. That's really interesting. I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. Yggdrasil, Michelle, uh, you won it. <laughs> you won it. Michelle will be with us uh, and she gets a golden ticket. Um, uh, if you want to send me or, or post your Instagram handle so I can put you into our special group and uh, congratulations. Odin's world, world tree, says Amber. Uh, Timothy, you're right too, but uh, Michelle was, was faster. So, uh, Michelle, uh, congratulations. And Kedrich has a second chance for everyone to win another golden ticket. Um, I wouldn't know the answer. Uh, I, I wonder. So, Kedrich, take it away. Yes. Let's follow this one here. Um, Yggdrasil, high up in the branches, is a great eagle who flaps his wings and the winds go all over the nine worlds. At the roots of Yggdrasil is a great dragon gnawing at the bones and the bodies of the dead. But between them, something is going on, something going up and down the tree. Anybody that can name those three things, what's the eagle's name? What's the dragon's name? And what's going on between the two of them? And what's that, what's that creature? What is that creature? And what is that creature's name? <laughs> Sarah's face was <laughs> great. Like, wow. <laughs> I wouldn't know it. I wouldn't. I'm. I'm honest here. I wouldn't know it myself. I see Monica is googling. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the camera, Monica. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Google gets a gold ticket, I guess. I and take it so I can't do that. that's true that is true that's true you're right uh so laura is saying snake and Haley is uh saying uh sorob door no we're not quite there yet uh. <laughs> trini mac is saying it's chat gtp cheating um yeah i don't know no it's it's not because how could we prove that so uh I mean, this is not the way how cheating works, right? <laughs> it's, not cheat it's not cheating when they can't prove it. Uh, that's when that's I was in how the college. What's when that? I, when I was in college, one of my favorite uh, instructors said, "All of the tests are open note, open book, open friend, because that's the way life works. But if you get one question wrong, you fail the test." Wow! <laughs> oh my goodness! Ah oh, man, you know, in, in the sure. what's that? Pressure. <laughs> Talk about pressure. Right. 
yeah oh man we had like some teachers in germany like some of them because the thing about that is that when you're like a teacher in germany you can never be uh fired ever in your life Ooh. uh you you get uh, hired once and then for the rest of your life you can you will always be a teacher and you will always get the money from the german uh from from germany forever ever so and it doesn't even matter if you show up or do your job or not so um we had some we had some some teachers who were just not showing up for any class or were like just showing us movies uh and then because they 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 had these exams going on then they were sitting there with a huge newspaper and i see like the whole class everyone was like putting up the books <laughs> for the answers there were some people who had like ipods with these huge strings and listening to to the recording they had on their on their ipod uh at that time so that was the thing okay let's see um uh many many people are, are saying uh thorandor um uh free from illusions is saying it's a squirrel named ratorask ratatosk ratatosk yeah it sounds like a pokemon actually interesting <laughs> <laughs> um ember says she doesn't know um uh Haley said that ember says eagle squirrel and dragon rata koski um laura is saying she has a little squirrel friend she doesn't want that to be eaten if that is like uh timothy is saying they are um oh, man I, I think it's too complicated. You have to uh, to give the answer, Kedrich, and tell the story too. The eagle high at the top is Frelsvager. Weird name, weird name, Old Norse weird name, Frelsvager. The dragon at the bottom is Nithogger. And again, there, the thing that's interesting about Yggdrasil is the branches reach up into the upper world. The roots reach into the lower world. So we're talking about the upper and lower worlds of the shamanic realms. You know, the lower worlds are like the dwarves and the dead. The upper worlds are like the ascended masters, the angelic, the gods are up there. But between the eagle and between the dragon, a squirrel runs up and down the tree, trading insults between <laughs> the eagle and the dragon. So, you know, wake up in the morning and the eagle is like, Hey, you, blah, 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 blah. The squirrel runs down and goes, da, 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 da. and the dragon's like, well, yeah, you, this, da, 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 da. The squirrel goes up, da, 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 da. So they just exchange insults back and forth via the squirrel. Interesting, beautiful. I, I didn't, I actually didn't know that. But in the very second, one second before you even answers, answered that, Diana Dawn is saying the giant in eel shape. Um, oh, that's an emoji in front of that. I can't read it um oh man ah, i can't re i can okay thanks for dropping some more comments okay. <laughs> so it goes up uh she's saying um the giant in eagle shape is uh the squirrel ratorask and uh the other one is i i don't even know she's using like letters that i've never seen that look new new oh. to me but i think that's the answer isn't it Can i you think we might be there yeah I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the stuff in the in the chat right here, and Kedrich is telling you if Diana is the second golden ticket winner. Yes, Hrelsvager, yes. Tosker, and Nithogger. Ah, oh, congratulations, Diana! Diana, Don, uh, Diana, you are the second golden ticket winner. Um, well done, well done. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe you have all these letters on your keyboard, but um, uh, at least very well Googled, I guess. Um, They're Icelandic letters. <laughs> Icelandic letters. Okay, that explains because I I wouldn't be able to. We have some weird letters in the German language, but these are like uh, looking very exotic to me. So uh, everyone, that was it. That was uh, our get together uh, for uh, March. Um, I'm I'm happy to see everyone next month uh, on the 24th. Uh, Diana, please send me your Instagram handle. Put it in the chat right now so that I can. Uh, put you into our exclusive group and next time we see you on this video call too and you got to ask uh, everyone some questions uh, and by the way Monica do you, you have some some last words you can say something ask something whatever you want okay thank you everyone that was great today I'm happy that we have 
two new golden t uh, golden ticket golden ticket winner. <laughs> I can see who they are. <laughs> it's, it's it's amazing. Yeah, I'm happy for today, and I can wait for next time. <laughs> oh, sweet! Thank you so much. Um, Diana, uh, because the chat is closing very, very soon, uh, you can also go into this recording and uh, either and put the Instagram handle as a comment um, or uh, yeah, something like that. If you're quick and put it in the chat right now, I'm gonna I'm able to see it, um, and then I can add you. Uh, otherwise, I need to to find you on Instagram uh, somehow. But I think I think I think I know uh, your Instagram handle. Anyway. Anyway, thank you so much, Kedrich. Thank you so much for sharing so much interesting, uh, interesting knowledge and wisdom. Sarah, thank you so much for your part on the healing uh, aspect of all of that. Uh, I love to see all of you uh, in October. Uh, Monica, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, Diana and Michelle, congratulations for being the two golden ticket winners. Uh, and everyone at home, it was super, super nice and it's such a beautiful time to hang out with everyone. Uh, so see you next month. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye.